If they asked me, I could write a book about the way you walk and whisper and look. Joining us now on our book talk segment, led to welcome one was written kind of a funny book. It's called That Should Be a Word. I'll give the full title. It's a language lover's guide to Corgasms, Poverty, Bradley, and the 250 other much-needed terms for the modern world. We're joined today by Lizzie Skernick. She's from up in New Jersey on the telephone. And uh, Lizzie, good to talk with you. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, you live in, you're in uh, Jersey City, New Jersey. Is that right? I am. How are things up there? I used to live in uh, Englewood Cliffs uh, at one time for about a year and a half. So uh, I know the I area well. Was, yeah, I was raised in Englewood. Oh, were you? So, okay. Yeah. Right, right across the George Washington Bridge. Exactly. And Jersey <laughs> City is right across from the Holland Tunnel, so I haven't gotten very far. Yeah, I, grew, I grew up in Long Island, but I did have a, about a year and a half in Jersey, so it's uh, it's an interesting place. But uh, anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the book, and it's really an interesting uh, book. It's kind of based on your uh, your column, right, the New York Times uh, Magazine, which uh, has been very popular. Uh, how did you get the column for, to start off? Well, I used to always rhyme and always and always make funny headlines for my blog, and I think I was kind of known for that. So when an editor thought of having an idea of having someone make up all these new words that we needed, they called me, um, especially because I was already sort of making up words. <laughs> well, it's a great idea, and, and, and the words sound like they're already legitimate. <laughs> That's what makes it, it, oh. makes it work. <laughs> <laughs> But right now, they're still sort of legitimate. I, I, I don't think. <laughs> Do you, you remember, I don't know if you remember, comedian uh, Norm Crosby, he would make up uh, kind of words uh, that, that sounded like they should be real and they weren't. I don't know if you remember him at all. It might be for, before your time, but he, he did a similar kind of thing in his comedy act. <laughs> they were sniglets, right? Uh, that, that was Rich Hall. That's another one. I didn't think of him oh, right those away. those were Rich Hall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we have quite a few word maker-uppers in society, for sure. Well, talk a little bit about uh, about the book. Now, this is based on, on the column, but uh, you, be, you break it down into different categories. So talk a little about the, the categories of the book and what people can uh, what people can expect. Well, the categories, you know, the, one of the categories is fidgetal. Uh, fidgetal is how we can't <laughs> stop checking our devices. And, you know, another category is banked, you know, which is when you're so worried about your money. And then another category is investigate, which is when you're looking around at your food. And what I found is that as I was doing the column and writing these hundreds of words, I realized, wow, these are really uh, only falling in these major categories, you know, money, love, children, technology, you know, home. And those are the things I think that we talk about enough and that have grown enough that they really need a whole lexicon. Yeah, just a couple of the ones uh, on digital correspondence, which sounds like a real word. It, it sounds like the correspondence word, but it's C H O R E correspondence, right? Mail you yeah, don't want to deal sure. with. <laughs> right, correspondence. Sure sure yes, a lot of correspondence. Sure we all have thirty emails and three bills at the end of the day, and those are our correspondence. Sure ridicule. That, 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 that's I like that one. Yeah, someone, someone on Twitter. Be, yes, which people do all the time. It's why I stay on Facebook most of the time. It's too much ridicule. <laughs> Epistol or e pistol, I guess, one who fires off messages. <laughs> oh, yes, we all know an e pistol in the office, and the minute you write them, they write back. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, people feel they have to, some people feel they have to answer almost immediately, and other people don't answer at all, right? It's kind of, there's no right. middle ground. That's what I <laughs> I've started just not answering emails, and it's amazing how well that works. <laughs> I, I think that's the best way to go, humor. unless it's uh, if it's an emergency, they'll call you. So it's no, nothing really right. is an emergency in email. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, do these words uh, like do you have a little pad of paper, or do you just talk into your maybe record into the phone when they when they hit you, or what's your process for coming up with these? Um, my process is I start my brain just starts naming all the words I associate with it. And then I'll sometimes look in a thesaurus to just keep getting associated words. And then I'll go somewhere and take a walk or take a shower. And then the word comes. And it never has anything to do with the words I've been looking at, mm -hmm. but it's like my brain now understands what I'm going for. And then it <laughs> produces the word. <laughs> you just have a kind of... Uh 
thought process where, where it hits you funny, which is good to have. Yeah, I, I feel like it's like, it's like you know, the stepmaster. And then <laughs> eventually, you know, you can take a really long walk, but you need to get on the stepmaster. And then you have to I come up I'm with... I like dating myself with that. <laughs> no, I remember the stepmaster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I also remember the thigh master, Suzanne Summers. Remember that? Oh, my God, the thigh master. We're really dating ourselves now. <laughs> oh, we're young people. We're, we're, we just have good memories. <laughs> a couple other ones. I just want to give out a couple more uh, samples. Common Twery, right? Worried about posting in case a million people respond. Another uh, one oh, related yes. to technology. <laughs> yes, that, that was one. I, I had a friend uh, who's a, a political reporter, and people write, on, you know, they'll comment on her Facebook threads, but sometimes you get scared. You know, you're going to be, if you're a Democrat, you're going to be attacked by a Republican, right. or Republicans are going to be attacked by a Democrat. Or just random people disagreeing. So, I mean, I often, I, I don't really leave comments anywhere unless it's someone I know because I'm very comment wary. <laughs> <laughs> I guess with people now, you know, doing all this writing online, Twitter and uh, Facebook and, uh, and uh, Instagram and all that, I guess people are more uh, aware of words now, right? Now, I know there's a lot of bad spelling on grammar on, on these online sites, but, but they're doing more writing, aren't they? So, so these words oh, are yeah, more in absolutely. people's minds. Yes, we, you know, what we keep inventing is different ways to talk to each other. You know, now we have, we started with just, you know, speaking, <laughs> and, then, and then just the phone, and then Morse code, and, you know, banging on drums. But now, you know, we have Instagram, we have the comment, we have the like, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have online dating, you know, we have really so many ways we can communicate. And what I love is how all of those are different forms. And some people, you know, it's why some people are just great tweeters and you want to read their tweet feed just because they're really good at that. And some people are really great Facebookers. You know, some people are great at writing funny comments or blog posts. So I like it how each new technology invents another kind of great writer. You know, instead of a great poet, now you have a great tweeter. And, <laughs> you know, it's a, I think it's a talent also. Yeah, it has opened up a whole new world of, uh, of uh, punditry, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, do you get, I guess by now you probably get people submitting words to you, right, with the column and now with the book? Did, did people uh, always oh, yeah. send you Pe different ones? Yes, people people write me all the time with words, and often when people meet me, they have a word they've been thinking of. So they tell me the word, which is always really fun to hear the other words people have. Um, one of my favorite ones lately was someone was asking for a word for the person who pretends they've read the post and comments, but they, they haven't really read the post or the comments, and that was an imposter, and I just loved that. <laughs> yeah, so, so many in the book, again, 250 examples and funny ones, and some are, uh, some, yeah, you see, that, that already was, it should be a word, if it isn't, it will be already, but uh, the name of the book is That Should Be a Word, and we've been talking with Lizzie Skernick today, I know you also do... Uh, uh, some work on radio as well, right? NPR and and other writing, but uh, this is kind of a, a labor of love for you, isn't it? This type of uh, this type of thing with the words. Yeah, this is my word for that is labor. That's, that's <laughs> what you still really like. <laughs> <laughs> well, give out your your website or Facebook. People can get a hold of you and get a hold of the book if they like. Sure, they, they can friend me on Facebook if they want, and uh, they can and I make up a lot of words there, and I also ask people for definitions for words that don't have a meaning yet. And um, they can also tweet me at, at Lizzie Skernick and can learn more about the book itself at That Should Be a Word. But you can also just Google me. I'm just, I need to have a word for people who have just infiltrated the web, but I'm, right. I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lizzie, real pleasure to talk to you. I know we have limited time today. Hopefully we can uh, talk to you when your next book comes out, but uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. 
This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.